All right, today and together we are going to draw the molecular orbital diagram for an oxygen molecule, that's O2. Oxygen has six electrons in its valence shell. That's two electrons in its 2s atomic orbital and four electrons dispersed amongst its three 2p atomic orbitals. That's true for both the oxygens and because the two oxygens are equivalent, they will bond and oh, the atomic orbitals will mix and overlap to become this set of molecular orbitals, including sigma 2s bonding and antibonding as an overlap of these 2s orbitals, as well as sigma and pi 2p bonding and antibonding orbitals from overlap and mixing between the two p's. Now, one important thing to note is that the molecular orbital diagram for oxygen is different than the one for, say, carbon and nitrogen. What you'll notice is that oxygen's molecular orbital diagram has its sigma 2p molecular orbital lower than nitrogen does. Here nitrogen's sigma 2p is higher in energy than the pi 2p. That has to do with the fact that, oh, uh, nitrogen's sigma 2p is higher than the pi 2p. In oxygen, the sigma 2p is lower. That has to do with the effect of the extra protons in oxygen. In fact, all of the period two elements that are nitrogen and before it will look like this and oxygen and after in period two will look like this. And again, it's due to the number of protons and the attraction that each of the individual molecular orbitals has for that nucleus. Anyways, what really matters here is you counting up the number of valence electrons that O2 has. Six from here and six from here makes 12 and there's no adjustments for charge because it's a neutral atom or molecule, I should say. So, we fill from the bottom up following the Aufbau principle and Hund's rule. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That is twelve electrons from the bottom up and spreading them out before you double them up. So, the bond order of O2, by the way, bond order is going to be the number of electrons in bonding orbitals, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, minus the number of electrons in antibonding orbitals, that's one, two, three, four, divided by two, which gives me four divided by two, which is a bond order of two, AKA a stable double bond between the two atoms. And I should have said before I did that, that this is a, uh, the done and complete molecular orbital diagram for O2. I'd like to point out that it, O2 is a paramagnetic molecule because it does have unpaired electrons and that the bond order would change if we either added extra electrons or took away electrons due to there being a charge in the molecule. Cool, there it is, O2, best of luck.